So you just installed Rancher and you're greeted with the new UI and you have no idea where the old UI is. This is pretty common if you installed Rancher for the first time or you accidentally clicked on the Cluster Explorer button. But don't worry, you can get back to the old UI clicking Cluster Manager. But we don't want to use the old UI anymore. Rancher's switching over to the new UI. But don't worry, I've got you covered. So let's check out the new Cluster Explorer. The new Cluster Explorer shows you the same information that you got in the old Cluster Explorer, but just arranged a little bit different. It seems like they're starting to use more standard Kubernetes names, rather than their own definition for things. Not that they were that different, but this is starting to look a lot more like the Kubernetes dashboard. So let's take a look at our cluster. First, we have a Kubernetes dashboard of all of our resources. It's a quick way to see all of our pods, our resources, our ingresses, persistent volumes. And if we had something going wrong, we would see an event, or an alert, or a red skull right here. And down below, we can see a lot of events. And these are the same events we would see in the old UI, but just arranged a little bit different. Next, we see namespaces. Now, most of the time, we're only going to use our default namespace, unless you've created more namespaces. So nothing really interesting here for us to see. Next is our nodes tab, and I only have one node in this cluster, but we can drill into this node and see information about it. And from here, we can see different types of alerts, we can see resources that it's using, all of the labels and annotations that are applied to this, the operating system that's running or the container runtime that's running. So lots of information about this individual node. And it's a lot more compact than it was in the old Rancher UI. And if we want to switch to different tabs, we can see information, what images are cached on this node, what taints are applied, if any, any conditions that we have, and any related resources. So this is a really quick way to see information about individual nodes. Next, we can go to our workload overview. And this is an overview of our workloads that are running. And we can see our deployments here. We can see I have Handbrake, LibreSpeed, Nginx, WireGuard, and another Nginx container. We can see the endpoints that are exposed, and we can see the resource type is a deployment. And here, we can actually edit this deployment from here if we'd like. So if we wanted to change anything about this deployment, we could change it here. And these are some of the same settings you would see when you click deploy workload or add a workload in the old UI. And if you can see on the left, we've actually jumped into the deployments. Whereas this is an overview or a dashboard for us to see all of our workloads. And deployments is where we could create or edit our existing workloads. So let's jump back up real quick. Cron jobs, if you have any cron jobs, they'd be here. Same with daemon sets, most likely you don't, but if you installed some custom daemon sets uh, from Helm charts, they might appear here. And then back to our deployments, what we were just talking about. And if we wanted to create or add a deployment like we did in the old UI, where it said add workload, we can create a workload or create a deployment right here. So notice I'm saying deployment versus workload. So deployment is a Kubernetes term. It actually matches a type within a manifest, so within YAML. So if we wanted to create a deployment, we would create one here. And here's where we would fill out our information about this deployment. So what's our container? Well, let's spin up Nginx, pull secrets. Do we have any secrets we need to pull this image? And we don't because this is a public image. Any additional commands or working directories or arguments, you would fill those in here. Any additional environment variables? Sometimes you have environment variables. Foo equals bar, but you get the point. Pod labels, if you wanted to add any additional labels to this, you could add them here. And pod annotations, same thing, you can add annotations here. Most of the time you don't have these, sometimes you do. Next, you can set up any additional health checks you want, labels and annotations, so this is drilling in further instead of doing everything on that first screen. Networking, if you have any custom networking you need to set up, you would set that up here. So node scheduling, where do you want to schedule this? Do you want Kubernetes to schedule it on all of your nodes or do you want to schedule it on specific nodes? Or do you want to run it on nodes matching a specific rule, like a label? And so that's what node scheduling does. Pod scheduling, kind of the same thing, but we add a node selector. If we wanted to constrain the resources or do anything different with this pod for resources, we could do it here. Scaling and upgrade policy, so how do we want to scale this? How do we want to roll it out? how that we want to deploy it would be defined here. Security context, these are the same things we saw with containers and in the old UI. 
Do we want to run it privileged or not? Run as non-root. Do we want to allow privilege escalation? Those are things you would define here. And then storage. Let's add storage to this. Do we want to add storage from an external source? Do we want to add storage from the node that it's running on? Do we want to add a persistent volume, something like Longhorn or NFS Client Provisioner? We do that here. And then, so let's go back to our container. Let's name this Nginx New, and then we can create this deployment. And we can see now that Nginx New is now up and running. And so now our workload is running, or our deployment. And if we drill into this deployment, we now have a dashboard for our deployment, so we can see what's going on with it. And we can actually reconfigure this if we like in the config section. We can see the YAML for this actual deployment. This is where I'm saying it's a kind of deployment our workloads are. Or we can go back to the details. And here we can see the pod logs. So if we go into this hot dog menu, click view logs, now we see the logs in this nice little drawer at the bottom, starting to look like GCP and other cloud providers, which is a good thing. And so here's the logs from that container. Nothing interesting to see. And we can exec into this pod too. If we click the hot dog menu again, we go to exec shell, and now we're in this pod. We can look around in this pod and do anything we would normally do when we exec into a pod. So this is where we do it. And the nice part about this drawer at the bottom too is that it's tabbed. So we can hop back to our logs and hop back to our terminal that's exec into this pod. So this is getting really nice. But let's close out of those tabs and then go back to our deployments. And then in service discovery, we're going to see the same things we saw before. Horizontal pod autoscalers if you like network policies if you want to apply them, and our services that got created from our deployment. And the same goes with storage. So we have persistent volumes area. We can create a persistent volume if we like, use a specific plugin. If you're using Longhorn, that would be in here. And so here's where you would provision persistent volumes for your cluster. And if you had any storage classes, they would be listed here. So if I had Longhorn installed, it would be listed here. Or if I had the NFS client provisioner, that would be listed here too. Any config maps for our cluster, they would be listed in config maps. And any claims that we had for persistent volumes or our deployments. And so when we take a deployment and we create a persistent volume and we give that deployment access to a volume, that's a claim. And so they would be listed here. And then secrets we have, so cluster-wide secrets. And you can scope these by namespace or however you like. And then a bunch of RBAC, so a bunch of permission stuff that you never usually have to mess with, is listed under RBAC. So we have cluster role bindings, cluster roles, role bindings. And this is something you rarely have to change, but if you did, here's where it is. And then we have lots more resources here underneath the more resources. And you can explore these if you like, but I spend zero time in here. And now you're probably wondering, how do we install Rancher apps? It's really simple. So if we go back under the Cluster Explorer dropdown and choose Apps and Marketplace, we can see them here. So these are all of the apps that Rancher supports. And really, I think most of these are Helm charts behind the scenes. And if you're not familiar with Helm charts, you don't necessarily need to be to be able to install these applications. Helm charts are an easy way to version control deployments and other manifests and other resources in that deployment so you can upgrade and remove easily. And so we can see here, we have a lot of apps, both from Rancher and from partners. And if we filter it down to just Rancher provided ones, we can see a lot of cool applications here, especially when we see monitoring and logging, which should be coming soon. Now, I know that most of my tutorials cover the cluster manager version of this, and it's still totally fine to use that. But Rancher has communicated that they are switching over to the Cluster Explorer as their default UI. So I highly encourage you to start getting used to this because this UI seems to be what Rancher is settling on too. So what do you think of the new UI? Is it confusing, wrong, or just different? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. It kind of destroyed my cluster and so I, I've been like recovering it little by little over the last week and so I didn't totally de destroy it. I, 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 my services were still up but I did destroy uh, my, my ingresses, my load balancer, lots of stuff. So I've been really 
kind of peeling back the onion over the last week and a half and trying to figure out, okay, how can I simplify some of my, my infrastructure? And at the same time, uh, how can I make it repeatable? And um, how can I uh, have a little bit less magic? 